Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review, and today I shall review Stage by Stage by John Graham. Before I do this review, can you please like and subscribe? Uh, check out cardmagiccourse.com, or it might change its name soon. So uh, just hit the link below and it will take you through to the course. Uh, loads of stuff on there now, 500 plus videos, live sessions every week. We've got Quinoa Hard Bottle coming next week, which is very exciting. So guest lecturers and all that stuff. Loads of, I'm not going to bang on about it, but have a look at it. That'll be a good thing to do. Click the link and all that. Right. Um, and do me a favour. After this, if you could share this with one person, if you like it, that would be lovely. Even verbally. Do it verbally if you want, uh, or share it on social media, that'd be great. If you know anybody that you think would like it, send them a private message saying, hey, I think you'd like this, and that'd be lovely, because I appreciate everybody that watches, and I appreciate your support up to this point. So, here we go. This is my first uh, recorded review in 2022. Blimey, I've done some live ones, but uh, life's been hectic, so I'm excited about this, because, and the reason is because I didn't want to go off and review the other stuff I got into the book, uh, the story is, which I've banged on about, I recorded an interview with John before Christmas, lost the interview, didn't record, waited a few weeks, did another one, that's on the site, so that will kind of act as half of the review, and I usually go through all the tricks, but we went through a lot in that interview, so I really do, if you want to know more about the book, that's where you'll get the really good stuff, I'm going to basically tell you what I think of it, after reading it from beginning to end, and a lot of it twice, because I did that thing of forgetting half it over Christmas and going back to it, um, and I'll tell you what I think as a stage performer and a close-up performer because this is a book written for those people that want to perform on stage that already perform on stage importantly because the main thing of this book is it's about that transition from close-up magic to stage magic but I would argue that it's about the transition from not doing any performing to stage magic and also for stage magicians to look at it and kind of analyse what they're doing and use this as a kind of barometer really which is the wrong word but you know what I mean something to, to work against and go am I doing that actually have I thought about this and that's really what I got out of it I looked through this and it made me question everything I do but in a really really good way so he starts off, there's a lovely intro by Azzy Wind, um, and I actually thought it was John writing it about someone he saw on stage many years ago, but it was Azzy writing it, talking about him seeing John on stage, which, you know, makes you... I mean, I've said this a few times, John looks like a, he's a very youthful gentleman, um, and when you read these stories about stuff that happened years and years ago, you go, wow, he's, he's done more than you think he would have done. And I think because he hasn't been someone that churns out material, and yes, he's, he's got his uh, newspaper tale, which is stunning, which is actually in here, um, and a few other things, but he hasn't got that thing of, you know, putting out loads of stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with that. So many of you, as we've talked about, would have gone, oh, John Graham, I've kind of had the name, but I'm not sure what he does. That's where I was. He has not been putting stuff out because he's been performing. So we're talking about, you know, 250 shows a year minimum. You know, over years and years, he really knows this stuff. And not only does he know it, he's published it because this without a doubt, after talking to him, after reading it, is his work. It's the stuff he takes on stage. He's even got a, um, a whole bit with extra material that he hasn't published in here, that, like the Nelson the Bottle Vanish and all things like that. He uses as an analysis for almost like a second and third show you could do, uh, which is incredible. So he's published everything he knows here, and you will know that when you read it. It briefly, it starts off with, with this idea of where, where are you now? That isn't actually what the chapter's called. It's called um, You Are Here. Yes. And this is about amplifying what you've got. And not going out and going, right, I've got to find stage stuff. It's about looking at the, the close-up tricks you've got and going, kind of where, where can I perform? Can I perform this on stage? And the answer is probably more than likely yes. And when you read this, he, he looks at this amazing, and a lot of people have talked about this, a version of Deep Astonishment by Paul Harris, which was a good trick. I got it to review. I never really got around to reviewing it, but yeah, it was a good trick. I had the little wallet, and I thought it was a kind of small trick that happens here. And it was great, but I, I never really worked with it too much. He's taken it and gone, actually, there's so much in this, and there's stuff that can be adapted to make it even more powerful than it already is. And he talks you through that process. And... I know that so many people have read that routine and gone, this is just gold. But it's not just a process. Everything in this is why I've done this, what I've adapted, but not only what I've adapted, why I've adapted it. And 
and you believe what he's saying, everything, you know, about not just saying a random word, a name instead, because that's so much more personal to someone, and you can just play on that so much and make it a really powerful piece of not only magic, but theatre as well. And then, and that's kind of where you are, and then he, he basically moves in, he talks about having like between 30 and 40 people in front of you for that, and then he goes, okay, what's the next stage? Well, the next stage, we've got maybe 50 people, so what can you do with that? And he's got Magician versus Gambler, two Harry Lorraine tricks, I think they're both Harry Lorraine now, I think. Uh, he's got a huge uh, respect for his mentors as well, one of which has been Harry Lorraine because of his reading and his, um, and his learning from him. So he's taken two Lorraine tricks, Magicians versus Gambler and um, a Lazy Man's Card trick and, and again, adapted them so they play a lot bigger. And I've seen, again, Magicians versus Gambler happening down here, a beautiful trick, but how can you bring it up here? And then... It goes on and the next bit, okay, this time you've got 70 people, so what have we got there? And it just goes on and on and basically takes you on this journey from you've got a few close-up tricks, let's look at what we can do with them. Here's an example up to you're on stage now and this is now about taking your existing close-up stuff and, and what can we, how can we make that work for you know, a big audience? And you know, he's got this, this idea of adapting. So two versions he teaches of Chris Kenner's Sybil, not just not the flourish, but Sybil the trick. And then he's got Sybil the stage trick. And he's got two versions, very similar, but he just goes, well, this is what I'd do if I had a big audience. And all of this learning is transferable. Yes, with all of those routines up to this point and beyond, you can take those routines, do them in close up, learn them. So it ticks that box for those of you like me that are geeks that want to just learn the trick. But also that because he's talking about why he's done things, he takes that and you can trans and, and he talks about this a lot. Look through your magic books, find stuff that works. Look at this why and go, you know, imagine you do a trick and you might not like the trick itself, but you might like the presentation. So could you put that presentation on another trick? And he's not shy of saying that at the beginning, feel free to copy this stuff, take it word for word, but understand that's part of the process. And the process he talks about a lot later with the three Ps, which is planning, performing and perfecting your show again, gives you all this meat to put on those bones of your show. And that's a phrase I say a lot. I mean, with good books, it does that. You've got the thing, but how can you make that something uh, more profound and enjoyable for your audience? And then he goes on to give you some amazing, like a, when he's talking about, you know, taking further and actually looking at routines that, that will, will play bigger, you know, ring flight. He's got a version of ring flight on here. And that's something I've always seen. I've done it on stage, but I've always felt it kind of, it works, but kind of, and he's made it work. And he gives you his routine with that and the props he uses, alternative props you can use. Um, and it's kind of a ring flight to envelope, but with a whole ring routine within it. So we, you know, we all love a kind of ring and string routine, so it's got that in it. So it's just a lot of these routines take these individual bits and make them into show pieces. And no more the two things in this that I got so much out of. It, I mean, this has got so much, you know, I'll just read it. Uh, this combines and intertwines the million dollar bill mystery, the barcode gag with a payoff card flourishes, the before your eyes prediction, a Himber wallet bill transformation, a hat tear and a hundred dollar bill switch. It's absolutely brilliant. And there is some real gold in that about how to routine, how to mix tricks together. And he does, he opens loops in it, which by that I mean he kind of opens tricks, starts tricks and then finish, finishes them off later on in the routine after doing some stuff in between, says this idea of callbacks. It is such a beautifully crafted routine. As a so, as, I mean, they all are, and, and that's what I think people are talking about this. They, they're getting so much from it. As is his, you know, the lemon trick, as he calls it, which is his version of Barry Richardson's Billy Lemon, which is so good. It doesn't do it in the way that, that a lot of people do the Bill and Kiwi and the Bill and Lemon, where you kind of do it in real time. It's, it's kind of the, the, the slightly more slightly older version of it so you look at the magic of michael amar the, 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 with the corner thing that's all i was saying there's a thing there which can actually not play as strongly but what i didn't realize is that it irons out all those weaknesses in that so yes you could do it with a sign bill which goes straight into the lemon but actually what this does it there's a box over there you don't go anywhere near the box at the end they take the lemon out of the box they open it they cut the lemon in half open it up and it's got the bill in it and they and, and the corner matches with their um initials on the corner it's it's really beautiful and it cancels out all those weaknesses that could be in that sort of routines, uh, routine. And what he's done in there, and as a good example, you look at, okay, the details. He's got all these details. So, okay, you've got a, uh, a lemon in a box, which is brilliant. The, the box has not already been 
um, been touched. But what he does, he leaves it off stage and he doesn't reference it at all because what he doesn't want is people knowing, oh, someone's going to end up in the box. So it's kind of there, but it's not really focused on. It may be used in a trick later, but then when he, he brings the focus onto that box, it's almost the first time you think about the box and therefore nobody's kind of um, thought in, in advance of what, what may happen. So it's a complete surprise. And loads of details like that. There's this bit, I think I mentioned in the interview, when he, he likes to set everything up. So when he leaves the room after a gig, he hasn't got all his stuff. So he gets it all ready for the last trick. He can just take a bow, walk out to his car, and he hasn't got that awkward thing of people seeing him grab. And it, it's all little things like that. And that's a really good metaphor for the rest of the book, I think. He's detail, detail, detail. And those details come from one thing. They come from performing. Even when he's talking about folding a bill. Well, if you fold it this way and fold this bit first, then you can fold this bit and that will go in there. And it means it won't bend as it goes in. All the little things that you would, that would take you maybe weeks and weeks of, of working it out, doing your shows. He's done this work for you. The theory, the, at the end, he kind of ties it all up. As I say, he gives you this, these three examples of, of three different shows you can do and then analyzes them. And he's got this lovely final word. And there is so much more to this, but this, like I say, you've got the, he has magic squares in this. There's a lovely, there's a lovely gag with the diminishing cards, which is a routine with no magic in it, which I think is, is kind of adds so much punctuation to his show. He's got a lovely routine called Catch Me If You Can, which is a bag puppet. And he's got a lot of, little bit of ventriloquism, then easy for me to say ventriloquism in it, um, which you could do quite badly, which I, I, I thought had so much uh, potential in it. And it's actually very magical. It's a prediction and it's the, the, basically the puppet catches a ball that's thrown at you from a load of different um, balls and it's a, it's a drawing prediction basically. Or no, it's not. It, it, it's a skill trick where they catch out of all the balls the, the drawing that the spectator has done. I just butchered that. Never mind. <laughs> You read the book. <laughs> I did it on purpose, so you buy the book. That's what I did. Magic Square. Um, but there's this uh, lovely, I just, and I, I just want to tell you as well, throughout this whole thing, all those things that you would worry about putting a show together isn't just the tricks. Yes, I've got the tricks, but how do I make it a show? Dealing with spectators, the gags, what gags are appropriate? How do you choose spectators? How do you deal with hecklers? All that stuff is in here and in, in spades. It's, it's just full of it throughout the whole thing. So it's a really lovely guidebook as well as a banging read as well I really really liked it um just a couple of things just to, that he says better than I could uh, everything we have examined is now completely assembled and interconnected openers middles closers by the way the whole chapter on openers middles closers why you would choose them and the examples of them uh, organic engineering, building bookends, jokes, lines, bits, music, tables, cases, and prop management. So that kind of sums up what you get in here. Even prop management, the cases, the tables you'd use. Brilliant. Um, but I wanted to read this. Where is it? And this shows, it kind of mirrors the beginning. It, he clearly has a huge respect for the magic show. And he talks about this at the beginning. So I did, let's not just go, oh, we're going to do a show. Let's, let's really give it the respect it deserves. And I, I, Steve Cohen also has a similar respect. You, I kind of saw that mirror. You know, Steve Cohen in Confronting Magic talks about, you know, he has, he has a huge respect for the work he does and puts all the effort into it. And I'm one that I'll admit, I kind of can be a bit sort of slapdash sometimes. And reading this sort of stuff really makes me remember what we do is so special. Um, so at the beginning, he talks about, look, let's, let's really not just treat this as a normal show. We're creating an amazement, but also we're doing something deeper. Uh, and he, he just, I'll just read this. Imagine all of these moments and others happening on top of an amazing and fun show. So he basically talks about, imagine, you know, you're not only doing a magic show, but in some point in that show, that person has thought about something about their life, you know, something, something deeper. And it sounds very grand, but actually it makes complete sense because that's exactly what does happen in a magic show. With your scripting, you'll make people think of other things other than the, here's a trick and I don't know how it's done. So he's elevating it way beyond that. So imagine all of these moments and others happening on top of an amazing fun show. What must that do to an audience? Can you feel the momentary flicker I spoke of? Enriching even one person's value of life is no small thing. It may be just what they needed at that exact moment in time. You are not here merely to show off your magic tricks. You are here to enable the world to live more positively and to bring people together. And when you do, you make the world a better place. Now, some people will listen to that and go, well, that seems a bit lofty and a bit kind of... I, 
I completely agree. As someone who's performed, I sometimes am guilty of not giving this the respect it deserves. I get jaded, and this is someone who is clearly not jaded. And he's not jaded because of the work he puts into his show, and that work he puts into his show is reflected in this book. I think it's a wonderful piece of work. It should be the top of the list for so many people. He's really taken a risk and put his stuff out there. Stuff that he performs right now. This isn't stuff that you've sort of burnt and given away. This is what he does right now and he's given you everything you need as a magician to take that, work with it, and then adapt it for your own style. There is so much more to say, but I think you should read the book. Um, it's absolutely great. So that's uh, John Graham, Stage by Stage. Do look at the, um, the links below because have a look at the interview as well because he'll explain a lot more on that and he's a really it was a really lovely conversation i was really glad to have it a really lovely guy uh but uh thanks to Link for sending it to me thanks john for writing it and thank you for watching me ramble on i hope you've enjoyed it have a great one take care like and subscribe check out cardmagiccourse.com whatever it's called when you watch this but check the link below and um learn from me take care see you later bye bye